Hello engineers, in this video I will demonstrate how you can build a .NET application as a container in order to create a microservice. If you enjoy the content I create and you want to support me for free, press the like button and subscribe on my channel. You can also check out my Udemy courses to learn more about Azure DevOps. Links for the courses will be provided on video description. The first course is an introduction for Azure DevOps platform and the second course will help you master Azure DevOps pipelines using the YAML syntax. In order to get started, you will need a virtual machine, a client PC or a host that runs Docker. Currently, I'm using my local machines for the purposes of this demonstration. So as you can see, when pressing Docker version, you can locate that I have already Docker installed and also the .NET framework. You can also check out if you have .NET installed by using the .NET minus minus version command. And then you can see which version of .NET you are using. So I will go and create a web API project with the .NET command CLI in order to deploy this project as a microservice. This means that the application that I have written in my Visual Studio solution will be hosted as a container either or a cloud service or on a machine that I have created on a private cloud. The first thing to do will be to run .NET new web API no HTTPS as we will not use a valid certificate for this application that we create inside the folder. So when we press this command, .NET CLI will go and create a project for you. And by pressing LS, we can find the files for this solution that we created. Then we will navigate in Visual Studio Code and open this particular folder in which we created our project. So I have placed this solution in the app folder inside my computer. The default .NET Web API project creates a weather forecast controller inside your solution, which you can use using a URL that is created from landsettings.json. So when you navigate in properties, you can locate the landsettings.json and there you can find that the Swagger URL will be localhost and then the port under which this application will run. So my port in this case will be 5125. And then we have the code for this weather forecast controller under our controllers. We can enrich this application and write our own app as this is the blank template that is created. And now we will handle the deployment procedure with Docker containers. In order to build your application into a microservice, you will first need a Docker file to instruct Docker engine how you should build your application. So we will need a Docker file for the instructions of the microservice. You can generate one automatically by using the command palette of Visual Studio Code and by searching Docker add. Then you will find the first option which says add docker compose files to workspace and you should press this button and then select the type of application that we created. For this case, we will use the ASP.NET Core and then we will select our operating system. In my case is a Mac OS X machine, so I will select Linux for this option and then automatically it will get the port which is specified in land settings dossier And as we previously stated, the port is 5125. So we will press enter in this setting and then we will go open extension in order to install the C sharp extension that is needed for the automatic generation of this Docker file. When the installation for this extension finishes, we can go again and follow the same procedure in order to add the Docker file that we said earlier. So we will go again and select our settings and then we should wait for the automatic generation of the Docker file inside our application. When the generation finishes, you can locate the Docker file that has been created along with the Docker compose file and those file 
include the necessary options that are needed for your application to run. For example, the expose of the port, the work deal and other Docker directives that are needed in order to run your application as a microservice or a Docker container. Now we will go and build this image inside our Docker directory. So we should go and navigate where the Docker file is placed along with the Docker Compose file. And inside this directory, we must use the Docker build command. So the Docker build command will use the current directory as the directory of the building. And with the minus tab, we will specify the name of the container image that will be generated. So in my case, I will name this image as net container and I will put the version one as the image tag. After we press enter, then the building of the image will be started and finished. And then we can locate our image by pressing docker image ls. So here we can find the image that we built it and we name it as net container version one. And now we can use this image in order to run our microservice. So in order to start a new container using this image, we must use the docker run command. So I will use the docker run minus minus name in order to specify a name. So I will call this container one. And then we can specify a port forwarding using the minus p directive in the docker command so that we can find our application and create a mapping between the exposed port inside the container and the port inside our host machine. So I will specify that I want to access 5125 port inside the container in my host in the same port. So when I type localhost and port 5125 inside my host machine, I will be able to locate this particular container. Then we should use the image that we created for the Docker microservice. So we will just paste the image name and then we will use the tag. So by pressing the Docker run command, we will start a new container using the settings that we analyzed right now. And as you can see, the microservice has started and we get output for the application that is running. So as you can see, the hosting environment is production as it is specified from the release directive that we use in the compile from the Docker file. And the application is running under the root path. If you try to run the application with the production settings, you may face an empty page when you run this locally. This is because in the last settings.json, you have specified the ASMNET core environment as development, and there you have specified the URL for the Swagger API. So when you build that with production directive, you will end up with an empty page. In order to bypass this, we should switch to development environment and we will go and change the Docker file appropriately. So I am adding in a Docker file and environment called development, the ASMNET core environment. And also I will go and build using the debug directive. Then I should go in the Docker and again run the Docker build command in order to get the new instructions inside my Docker file. So we again run the app docker build command with a new tag or the same one. And then we create a new image for our microservice. Then we will go again and run our microservice using the app docker run command minus D in order to get this microservice in the background. And then we specify the port forwarding and also the image that we want. Then when you run the application, you can navigate in the URL of Swagger and get the result of your microservice.